Hi everyone, welcome to Meta Interview with Clara Copy. Today I'm here with Chloe. She's the founder of the Marma J Foundation. Welcome, Chloe. Hey there, Clara. <laughs> How are you? Doing well, thanks. And you? I'm fine too. Um, awesome. Like I said, I'm, I'm getting used to this looking at the camera. <laughs> doing, great, doing great. Let's have fun, good time. I'm sure it'll be great. So, <laughs> So first things first, uh, tell us a bit about uh, your background. Uh, where do you come from? Your choices? What what led you to where you are today? Wow, big question. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, uh, so I guess my background has nothing to do with like Web3 or crypto or tech whatsoever, mostly. Um, I spent the majority of my life playing soccer, like football. Um, uh, and I get, I coached after that, uh, after I decided that playing professionally wasn't for me, you know, I wanted to kind of settle down try and build a community. I thought coaching might be a good way to do it. I loved working with kids for a long time. Um, I have like 10 younger siblings. I'm the oldest of, uh, I, I saw 11. yeah. <laughs> and so big family. Uh, but being the oldest sibling with so many, I've always loved like uh, supporting those around me, uh, being around a lot of people and having like a vibrant community uh, to there to like also support me as well. Um, and so when I learned about crypto, I guess about I guess 2017, I want to say, I always, uh, dates are, yeah, not the best for me, but a few years ago, um, I guess I got lucky. Um, I was just between like gigs I was moving a lot at the time and I got offered a position to be a uh, technical analyst uh, for somebody um, and basically reading lots and lots of white papers and deciding if things were uh, worth investing into so at this point in time there was a lot of hype a lot of uh, scams I mean just like there is now I guess um, yeah. but you know these these waves come and go and so this was during a big wave and um, so I was learning a lot about different projects and, you know, we were seeing lots of money invested into projects, many failed, um, but being here for a little while, it's been kind of cool seeing some of the products that have succeeded, trying to understand why they've succeeded. And, you know, through everything, uh, you know, being involved with so many different projects, you know, trading for a while, uh, researching in the Ethereum blockchain for a bit, and then kind of following mint base over to near a little bit in the creative side of things. Um, and then actually working at the near foundation on the community team for a little while. Um, I realized that community really tends to be like the heartbeat of any ecosystem. Um, so whether it's a really big family that's able to support each other in times of need um, or whether it's a really vibrant guild ecosystem that can support each other with payout proposals or uh, how to use new Web3 tooling or whatever kind of crazy stuff I'm sure you know as you've been using Near here and there, there's always something new it. that you run into. <laughs> um, and having a community to you know, support you makes things a little bit less scary. Um, it's everything. Uh, and a little <laughs> smoother. And so realizing that, um, I realized that I would also like to build uh, my community and my family on the near ecosystem if possible. I mean, I love experimenting with blockchain tech. Um, I think that everyone should at least have the skill set of using the blockchain, just like using the internet, just like typing, just like being able to use an app or the app store. You don't have to use it every day, all day, like I do, like a you know, I'm, I'm like literally sending hundreds of transactions a day, like manually by my ledger, but I let you know what I do full time. But everyone should know how to, you know, take part in a community NFT project to raise funds for a local charity. Like that's pretty cool. Um, yeah. And so at the Marma J Foundation and the Marma J DAO, we really try and just educate guilds, communities, people with how to use this stuff and how to build self-sustaining communities, hopefully. And that's very helpful. I saw your website. Thank you. Can you help me? <laughs> My fiance uh, awesome. does 99% of the work there. I'll have to admit, 
I, I, I like rarely it. even uh, type a single thing there or design anything. <laughs> um, I'm there to support with like words and, and then like content, but she is the mastermind uh, behind everything. Very helpful. Thank you. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I'll pass the message along. And Tabea as oh. well. Tabea writing the guides as well. Top notch, Tabea, you're awesome. Oh, she's great, right? She's just all over and she's so nice. I know. She's amazing. Uh, luckily, I met her in person. Yeah. Um, and she's <laughs> awesome. I'll have to go get to Lisbon again. Uh, oh. so hang out. I'm going to interview her too. She she seems really great. That is a wonderful. I'm loving. Idea. I would yeah, love I'm to loving. I, would love, to I want to watch that. that one too. I'm excited now. Oh yay! <laughs> <laughs> so tell tell me a bit. Well, you you talk about a bit how it was a transition to your previous work area. Mm -hmm. It has nothing to do with Web <laughs> three or blockchain. Yeah. So I was going to ask this question. So you're ready been there a bit so how does how does this affect you uh this change of life like you were doing all that before you you, you came to the blockchain and how did it change your daily life your work how was that for you i'd say that not much has really changed um yeah so, <laughs> yeah it, it, it's it's wild like i feel like i was always very busy um mm -hmm. as like a coach you know going from field to field trying out different experiments trying out different plans educating different teams and communities on how to use the tools around them to oh, achieve I see the resemblance. Move on. so i've kind of always <laughs> been doing this coaching and teaching and communities thing um blockchain has just made it a lot more efficient um which is honestly the reason i do it um, so now I'm able to experiment and support communities and those communities are able to go and support themselves by what they've learned in the ecosystem and the skills that they have. Um, like the whole old adage, like, you know, teach a man to fish kind of thing. Like, um, I really feel like that's true in the blockchain space. And I think just because things move so fast where, you know, you're able to spin up a DAO within... I mean, you can have a Telegram group full of 50 people around an idea within half an hour. Um, you can crowdfund, you can use like the tip bot, right? To crowdfund five near for your idea uh, within yeah. the next hour with a purpose and people can be using Canva, making designs. And all of a sudden you have a council with a treasury. Let's say someone's in a different guild is really nice and they give you, you know, 30 near and let's just you know so get started with some twitter stuff and you get some people excited and started and all of a sudden within a few hours you can kind of just have this idea set up with very little risk but a lot of momentum like a lot of you know people throwing ideas up and if it doesn't work it's not a big deal who cares we tried something we had fun and, and i think honestly i think a lot of it like gaming um and one learns in the process yeah like you play world of warcraft you hop into a party it might be a terrible party. You might just hop in and be like, this is not for me. And you just hop back out, right? And that's okay. And But there should be incentives for staying in the group and participating, yeah. even more incentives. Maybe you really like some people you're partying with. You, be, you start a mm -hmm. guild together. You party with them often. There's even larger incentives. But with the blockchain, those incentives can pay your bills. And I think that's the largest uh, difference. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, <laughs> at the end of the day, we all have, you know, uh, you know, uh, physical needs to meet. And when you can get a community together where everyone is creating what they're passionate about, being able to support each other um, in, yes, creative ways and inspiring ways, but also like meeting each other's physical needs by coming together and supporting each other. I think that's a super cool thing. And I think DAOs allow you to do that. And uh, I think that luckily not much has changed in my personal life. Um, I'm inside a little bit too much maybe, but honestly, these days I can work from Telegram most of the time. So I try and just go walk the dog and uh, work from my phone out there. Uh, so. Cats, they don't walk outside. <laughs> Sometimes I miss a dog because I, I would go <laughs> See, that's the life hack. You gotta get it. So, like, yeah, we rescued our dog from Antigua. You gotta get a dog. 
because once you have one you, they guilt trip you into going out and exploring nature and seeing new things every day and, the world, right? uh, it's not it's sometimes it's super annoying you're like oh my gosh i can't believe i got a dog but you like you know i love animals yeah, so you always love it, yeah. <laughs> i was going to ask you what you think of dogs but you, you already well oh you gosh are under, love dogs you are mm -hmm. answering my 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 questions before i ask them that's great yeah. back and forth <laughs> uh, but no when we were when we were in antigua um it's like we had a, a pack of about 15 dogs that we were feeding and taking care of every day um and that oh. was super fun so i think we're gonna have to do that again uh because that, <laughs> that, that was a fun <laughs> i do love i do love dogs and so does my fiance so um oh that's great good to go yeah, me and my husband we love animals, but for now we ha we have cats. Okay, so cats are have good. A house. Cats are... Yeah. My fiance said she might want a cat soon. You know, so we'll see. How many cats do you have? I have two. Two cats. Okay. <laughs> nice. So when I, I, had a when cat I have a house, I will I will want to have a dog. Okay. okay. It's a tiny so... a tiny apartment. Dogs. I don't know if they would like him very much. <laughs> That's true. The dogs like to run, right? So it would be better with a little bit more space. A little more space for sure. You can get a little small dog, a little like apartment dog too. Yeah, yeah, maybe we can think about that. <laughs> so you're involved in any other dog? You have Mama J from the foundation and are you in any other dogs? Yeah. So these days I have been focusing mainly on the Marma J Dow. And then the Marma mm -hmm. J Dow is of course on the creatives Dow council. So I'm involved heavily there. I, I do sit on a few other DAOs that I vote on from time to time, like the Cheddar Dow um, for that like community staking platform. And we hope to get the Marma J community involved there in the future. Um, I also sit on some other DAOs that I, I just support from like a management side of things. So like the onboarding DAO, I just kind of help the uh, Ina DAO. Um, mm -hmm. I kind of, I'm on the council, I support the management, but uh, they're doing amazing things. And I can't really say that I've been involved in it too much. I, I think that they're doing great, but a lot of what I do on some of the other DAOs I'm on is just, you know, help with voting, help get things set up. And then hopefully they kick me off soon. Uh, and then go off and do their own decentralized thing. Um, but soon I'm going to be starting another DAO uh, with a secondary uh, sales NFT marketplace coming on near called The Auction. Um, the so it's like auction. The dash auction dot IO. Um, and it's a secondary sales marketplace coming soon on near um, and we're just going to be starting a DAO uh, to interface with other DAOs um, like just for example if we want to you know, if there's some guild out there that we're going to partnership with some like special auctions on the platform for example yeah um, obviously it's helpful if we have a DAO so that we can interact with that DAO um, and everything it's really cool because obviously with Astro it's recorded and everything's mm -hmm. transparent yeah, um, I, I think it's it. a great way to kind of make sure the community knows what's going on um, with, com you know, with community uh, engagement and uh, mm -hmm. partnerships. So. Brilliant. I'm dying to see it. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. It should be fun. I'm dying to create the DAO. I mean, I feel like I've created so many DAOs um, so far, but uh, it's been so much fun. So. Yeah. so how many DAOs are you on, if you don't mind me asking? I'm curious. Uh, now I'm on one DAO. I'm on Metaverse okay. DAO. That's nice is making this possible so just <laughs> for one me for to now. interview you. They haven't roped you yeah, into one for now. tons of others yet. Okay. One is good. Yeah. One is good. I'm getting started. Uh, I'm going there. There you go. Soon I'll be in a bunch of stuff. <laughs> hey, slow and steady. When you interview Tabea, you'll yeah, have to talk yeah. to her about this stuff. When when she first got in, I think I, I was on the very first meeting that she had with Nier, I'm pretty sure. And she didn't really know much about crypto yet, but she was like learning about the space. And then from and the there, process. you know, to, you know, less than a year later, I'm pretty sure. Um, and but she's in like, I don't know, more DAOs than me, I think, definitely. Um, and she's yeah. just like, doing wonderful things. So we all That's kind of went progressed through the space yeah. very quickly, in my opinion. It's it growing and yeah, it's steady, knowing people, connecting. 
and yeah, having a solid purpose of what I want to do and build and help people, mm -hmm. that's going to be awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. And then but I think doing it by interviews is a wonderful way of doing it. Um, yeah, I've had a few great. I'm loving with it. different people in the space, and it's been great to learn more about um, the people that are experimenting in the space. Um, yeah, and the real people that are building near, that are building the DAOs, that is going to be awesome. I think it's, it's really good for the world to see the real people that are making it. Like, those are people, they have lives, they have dogs. <laughs> and exactly. They, they are and in and the metaverse. It's so hard, you know, when we're not able to do so as many in person things, especially over the past couple yeah. of years, you know, we all know um it's been so difficult and so i think so much more important therefore to try to show these stories and tell these stories yeah. and so with the marma j foundation we're trying to yeah. so we actually have tabea interviewing some of our own council members to tell our own stories um you know as well as our project stories um so yeah i think it's just it's so wonderful to do but the marma j foundation hopefully uh we're we're working on getting our nonprofit established in Ontario, like in Canada now. Um, and we're hoping to start having some in-person meetups to kind of keep that kind of vibe going mm -hmm. of trying our best to create some sort of, uh, like just more interactions between the community. Um, obviously not everyone can meet up in person and, you know, depending on as regulations are continuing to change, who knows what's gonna mm -hmm. happen. Um, yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> exactly. But I think the idea is to try um, to try yeah. and get people in the community that maybe don't have aren't as comfortable interfacing online um, mm -hmm. to kind of interface in person and connect. I think it's been so cool the past couple of years. I mean, how people that are used to connecting online all of a sudden are like, yes, OK, this is awesome. I'm so used to this. Let's do all this online stuff. But I think, you know, it, it's also very important to make sure we're, we're keeping with the um, in-person connection as well. So hopefully the Marma J Foundation is going to have some local meetups soon. Uh, looking forward to that. It's going to be awesome. I want to see it. <laughs> uh, so uh, why did you choose to build on your protocol? What, what brought good. you there? Yeah, no, good question. Um, I definitely get this one a lot. Um, so I knew I knew nothing about Near until Mintbase decided to go to Near, um, and so I was like, I think Nate is quite intelligent. Um, I respect him as a builder, um, and so I was like, okay, well, if Nate is deciding to go completely uproot his Ethereum project, pretty much, and go learn Rust and build on Near and do this difficult, hard, challenging thing with like. 40 splits in royalties and create a new oh, yeah. standard crazy. and all this crazy <laughs> stuff that I think helps people so much. Yeah, um, totally. Let me look into it a little bit, right? Like, <laughs> I'll read, and I, I, I was doing a valid or privacy research. And so I was uh, doing research on different blockchains and how to create private staking pools. And so I was like, okay, let's see what Near has to offer. I was doing a lot of Ethereum research and so I was like, let's look at another blockchain. Let's see how it differs. How are they trying to solve the problem that near? And I was hoping it would help me learn more about Ethereum and, and continue working on Ethereum stuff, honestly. Um, but as I started reading the, the, paper, like the research papers that were put out by the near team, and honestly, my favorite piece of content was the, uh, the whiteboard series that is on the near YouTube page where uh, Alex Gidnoff and Ilya uh, uh, go through like dozens of different blockchains. Um, and they like talk, they ask questions and they like dig into why things are built a certain way. And they mm -hmm. kind, of, kind of compare things to how they're building near. And it's interesting looking back cause it's like, you know it's before near was live when a lot of his videos came out and like before Solana was live and before Avalanche was live and like before all these chains were live. And so you can see now how a lot of these chains are handling load in real life. And you can see how Nier is handling things and how it's growing. And um, But seeing how intelligent the Nier team was and how they were handling questions with other teams 
really made me realize that I wanted to be a part of what what near was building I guess uh, that was really all it was um, I think dynamic resharding is super cool I think the idea that you know as the blockchain needs more storage and more throughput um, more shards will come online and more validators will get spun up and then as you know there's less need it's like it's almost like a highway you know as you need more roads you build them but the problem with real life is that you can't just take back those roads. It's very difficult to just be like, oops, we don't need them anymore. Let's, <laughs> let's shrink that road again. Um, the reason I think dynamic resharding is so, is so interesting is that you get this way, you know, this algorithm, this, like, this math problem that solves how to decide how to create and remove these roads as traffic is needed in the network. And so I think, hey, if I can be part of creating that, then cool. Like, you know, that, that seems valuable. Um, and so, again, I think the community is the heartbeat of any ecosystem. If we can create a vibrant community of users on Near, who, and I think Near has great UX, of course. I don't, I don't, I don't just want to, like, uh, you know, use it only to get the end goal. I, you know, I think Near has great UX. I think people that have never used blockchain before are able to, you know, pop on, you know, click a link drop oh, it's very easy. Account, and then all of a sudden they're using a DAP. That, that's wild to me um, where, you know, MetaMask can get so clunky sometimes. And, you know, once you learn these things, you get the hang of them regardless of the blockchain. But I think mm -hmm. Near is a great way to onboard people to Web3. Very general. intuitive. Yeah. So you can go to Near, then you can try Aurora. And if you love the Ethereum virtual machine, if you love the EVM, Sure, you know, you can start using Avalanche and you can start using Polygon and you can, great. I'm happy that Nier was able to teach you more things about this new Web3 ecosystem. That's so amazing to me, like that's awesome. Um, but I think Nier allows for that. Um, and it's like, yeah, there's, I mean, there's so many cool, like for example, I think one of the coolest things that I, I found that at ETH Denver was that anyone can just, they're making it so that it's really easy to spin up your own Aurora smart contract. I know that sounds super like crazy and out there, but a DAO that gets started can grow and create their protocol and create their mm -hmm. project. And then one day can be like, hey, we, we want our own Ethereum virtual machine. And they can just create it on near. And they can use their own token as the gas token. And they can just have their own MetaMask endpoint. So the reason I think I love building on near so much is that it allows a community and hopefully the Marma J community to experiment with Web3 technology um, in whatever way we'd like. So if we really like polka dot and we love the substrate ecosystem, what, you know, polka dot stuff, whatever they're doing over there, we can try out the octopus network and we can, you know, try creating our own app chains on near. And if we like Ethereum, we can use Aurora and create our own EVMs. And if we want to continue using, you know, layer one proof of stake stuff, uh, you know, asynchronous cross chain near stuff, we can do the hard stuff like Mintbase is doing and like Ref Finance is doing and like Paras and build on layer one. Um, and so just a lot, and you can do it for a reasonable price where, and like, Sorry. and again, like I think the coolest part about near is you don't have to pay to start experimenting. Um, yeah. So you can get started with a guild, you can get a small bounty and that, you know, $20 US bounty is enough in gas to experience. Goes a long way. Many apps <laughs> you like yeah. Across the it's ecosystem. so cheap. I love it. So then you can find, you, know, you can find where you feel comfortable even more, right? The next community, the second DAO you take part in or the mm -hmm. next NFT platform you want to use. I think one of the uh, issues with some with Ethereum at times or layer one is that you kind of get locked into your community because it's so expensive to leave and go yeah. to different communities. Where on near currently, I think one of the beauties of uh, how easy it is to just go to all these communities is that you can be in 30 communities at once and it might be a bit too much and you can't really commit to all of them, but you can have fun and you can experiment and you can learn. And honestly, I think we're so early to the blockchain space that it really should just be about learning and educating ourselves and having fun and creating and not as much about like being too serious and 
too financial about it. So, you know, if we can have fun and create and learn and pay some bills, awesome. Um, but I'm definitely not too worried about like the VCs and, you know, all that stuff. Um, I think we're, we're just kind of having fun. I think that's the point of most of this. And for Even for artists that don't know how to create smart contracts and all that, it, it's very easy to use. And the, the gas fee doesn't forbid you to start. Like if you don't have a lot of money, mm -hmm. you, you can't start. It's not that hard. And usually you have this DAOs that will support you and uh, maybe give you some uh, initial amount so you can mint stuff. And yeah, it, it, you, you can get started without having to make uh, a debt. Like I have to borrow money to do that. No, you can yeah, go there I think, and I think that's people will help you. Fun. Community uh, is when, great. Yeah, when artists <laughs> feel like they have to like exactly borrow money. I think that's such an old concept of yeah. I have to borrow money to start my endeavor, or mm -hmm. my project. I have to go to a bank or I have to yeah. get my credit card out or my debit card out. I mean, arguably, you should, I think the whole point of Web3 is you shouldn't have to give anything arguably you should be able to be incentivized by mm -hmm. providing your attention and your creativity and your you know your your support to a project um and i think that's kind of what we're able to get um like it's so cool where you know a dao like you can retweet a dao's um project and that could allow them to you know airdrop you a wallet you know, with a couple of near on it in DMs, right? And that could allow you to get involved in their DAO on Astro, um, participate in some bounties, and all of a sudden you've okay. got five, 10 near. Um, you know, you could open up some of your own smart contracts, like on Mintbase, get involved in NFTs. Okay. Awesome. And the idea that at arguably no risk or loss to yourself, besides, you know, you get hacked and lose the, the 10 near that you got for free, hopefully, you know, by having fun on the internet, oh. <laughs> which sucks, it happens. <laughs> but then, you know, I think of it like, I don't know if you played RuneScape, but I kind of think of it like being <laughs> in RuneScape and being in the wilderness and you die and lose all your stuff. Yeah. It happens, you know, it wasn't the end of the world. It would suck. No, no, and no. then you'd go back and you'd go gather some more resources and you'd go back out and have some fun. And so, I think to me, that's what the metaverse is. It's this world where we can go on the internet from wherever we are, go out and gather some resources without risk to ourselves, go to some DAOs, earn some crypto, uh, create some NFTs, you know, farm in some DeFi platforms, whatever we have fun doing, um, and hopefully start to have fun, exper experiment, and grow something sustainable um that we can build upon as a community i mean hopefully we're not going out to the wilderness that often and losing our gear that's not something <laughs> we, we want to happen um i definitely like staying uh, in a pve environment myself uh these days um but but honestly one of the really cool things about blockchain is that you you, you are allowed to have these pvp environments um that do fund the rest of these initiatives um which is really cool uh, i'm gonna and that's what I'm, what I'm going to ask uh, next. Uh, what are your thoughts on the metaverse? How do you think that having a virtual space is helping your DAOs reach their objectives uh, more efficiently or uh, communicate with people, interact? What do you think about that? Yeah, so again, to me, metaverse is like just being able to do like what we're doing online. Mm -hmm. So I mean, when I was a preteen, I'd be in the Toronto library, uh, like grinding RuneScape gold and selling it to my friends to buy patties. Um, and so to me, that was the metaverse where I was going online and I was earning mm -hmm. resources and selling them to, you know, uh, fund what I, what I was doing, my, my childhood projects of eating something yummy. Um, but I think obviously with Web3 tech and blockchain, we have more efficient mm, like virtual worlds and virtual experiences 
that allow us to uh, have a more uh, uh, expansive metaverse, like a metaverse with a lot more detail, a lot more in people involved, and um, with a lot more initiative. Um, so living like their entire lives in this ecosystem. Like I think I have the majority of the assets I care about are like digital or you know, blockchain assets. And so I think virtual worlds really help to communicate. I think that was a good word that you used. It really helps us to communicate with um, people that may not understand the metaverse yet. I think the metaverse has been around for a long time. I think a lot of people that are into crypto understand that, that we've been you know, playing Second Life or Minecraft or RuneScape World of, these are all really vibrant, basically metaverse worlds. Uh, we've been putting our credit card in for a very long time, paying for these things. We know that yeah. <laughs> we know that there's economies there, um, but a lot of people don't understand yet. And so I think the more different types of creative virtual world that we can create, um, it makes it clearer to people what we're trying to build. Um, and I think it's really cool, like um, for the Marma, uh, the Marma J Chan gallery that we have in Near Hub, what was really cool is that as we were able to put up people's artwork, even for our own community, like we don't really communicate, or well, I don't communicate much with like external communities from the Marmaj Foundation. It's really about, for me, trying to build this internal community as much as we can and growing it, of course, as large as we can, but really trying to create some sort of family and just trying to build upon itself. But getting DMs from some of our artists um, you know, with how excited they were to be shared in the VR space and, you know, how cool it was to pop in in a link and see it. And it really kind of shows the difference because honestly, for me, I've been experiencing virtual galleries for years. I've been flying around mm -hmm. crypto voxels for a really long time. And so yeah, I love it. it doesn't, <laughs> yeah, it doesn't seem that um, like exciting for me, honestly, it just seems very just task oriented like okay mm -hmm. I want to show the art so I'm going to put it up but then yeah. seeing how the community feels so supported and how they're able to now communicate with their friends and family so now mm -hmm. they can take that link and show their teachers or show their friends and say hey look I'm displayed in this gallery okay. with all these other artists <laughs> this, is, this is real so even yeah. though I, like for me all I need is the blockchain I can go on the CLI and I can be like oh it's real that's that's what I like but, you know, when my mom sees you know, my validator running in my living room and she sees all the logs, to her, it's yeah. gibberish, right? To her, it's like, I don't know what this means. Don't get it. To me, I'm like, oh, look, you know, I'm, I'm connected to all my peers. It looks good. So <laughs> I think what the virtual worlds give us is this way to connect to different types of people. Um, mm -hmm. Some people like more pixelated worlds, like uh, crypto voxels. Some people like more realistic worlds. Um, there's plenty of virtual worlds in the New York system already. Um, and I think it all, it's like, it's like video games. Um, there's going to be different types of video games that cater to different audiences. Um, and I think, I, and I hope, I, I, mean, I know on near there's plenty in the works and there's already plenty that are, that are alive. Um, mm -hmm. but there, I think there needs to, for, for a vibrant, uh, metaverse to exist where, you know, everybody feels as though they can take part. In my opinion, you obviously need to have multiple different variations of what the metaverse looks like or what the virtual interfaces look like. Um, because for me, you can make it look like World of Warcraft and I'm happy. Yeah, you know, you can make most of my interactions a video game and I'm gonna be playing that all day. But my mother, um, that's not the interface she's looking for when she's mm -hmm. looking for the metaverse, when she's looking for an online experience where she can gather resources and interact with community. She's probably not looking for a video game but when she sees yeah. virtual worlds and art galleries she somewhat understands but this was actually the funny thing with her she only understood it when she saw her art inside of it so when i was showing her other Connected. people's galleries yeah she was like i get it but i wouldn't buy it that was her thing mm -hmm. um and then she started realizing that it could be a way just to you know like how you have websites to like instagram or facebook to express yeah. your creativity it that felt, these virtual like, uh, worlds, art. exactly. You could just use it to share and be social with uh, those that you care about. Um, except that um, in the in the crypto space, by letting your space be open to others and having your mm -hmm. 
creativity be for sale, you can also fund that creativity. So some yeah. people have some really pretty Instagram accounts. Like I've seen some very beautiful Instagram mm-hmm. accounts. Um, and I think that the Web3 space is not that sophisticated yet, but what it does give us is a way to fund those, in, you know, those accounts or those spaces directly and fund creatives directly for what they're creating and what they're you know, putting together. And I think that's really cool, um, the way that we can do that. You can, like, for example, you could mint on you know, Mintbase, create a little 3XR gallery, or you don't even have to even mint on Mintbase. Okay, you can create awesome, a 3XR right? gallery for free. Yeah. And that becomes yeah. like a little mint, that becomes a little 3D Instagram page that you can go sell um, to fund no charities, to fund <laughs> um, whatever initiatives that you care about. And so at the Marma J Foundation, we try and fund social good initiatives. We try and <clears throat> fund, um, like for the Valentine's Day card event, okay. we're trying to, yeah, we're Thank trying you. to fund a young man, a young man named Maxime, uh, who sadly was diagnosed with uh, brain cancer recently. Oh. And so he's going through chemotherapy and radiation treatments. And so, um, Again, we like we've raised, I think, like 14 or 15 near so far. So for us, it's definitely right. not about like the magnitude of funds that we raise. It's more about showcasing how this could be used to raise funds for initiative and then just using those funds and saying, hey, um, here's the private key to this account or here's the funds, however it's most easy for you to use. If it helps you get to the hospital one more time or if it helps you do one more thing, that's awesome. But the ability to do any kind of good simply from community creation is kind of what we're trying to just educate communities about. Just trying to show them that, hey, you can just, you know, go find some art that you like, put it together in a gallery, and then put it for sale, and then try and market it, and then raise funds for a charity. You, you mm-hmm. can go do that and then give up. I mean, I remember in my early days of blockchain, I loved this certain project. And all I wanted to do was run their charity uh, marketing campaign. That's all I wanted to do. All I wanted to do was go around the streets of my local area, giving out like blankets and toothbrushes. All, But I was like, hey, you can brand it all with your project and I'll go out and help. But I couldn't get the funding. Like for some, I, was, I, was, I was trying, I was talking to everyone. They, was, they wouldn't give me the funding. But what I love about the real Web3 space, the real, the real crypto space is that you don't need to ask permission from anybody to go out and try and fund a project. You can just, you know, get your little five near bounty, go create some galleries every day, go out and try and find the best NFTs and create your galleries and people can support you and you can go out and show what you're doing with the funds. And in, in my opinion, with how supportive the near community is, if someone was out there yeah. showing what they were doing with their funds every day, creating new galleries, taking screenshots of who they were helping, creating new NFTs of that, creating galleries of that, going out and helping people, they would probably, you know, be fine. <laughs> Let's put it that way. They they'd probably have some support. Um, and so the Marmon J Foundation is just about trying our best to show people that you can do this stuff. You can just go to your local beach and just start picking up trash and take pictures of yourself and create NFTs to fund your project. And that project could become a DAO of people all around the world picking up trash. And then you could create some sort of protocol or some sort of DAP because there could be funding at a hackathon where with your DAO and your foundation could give you $30,000 towards an idea. And then all of a sudden you can have a bunch of devs from the education side of things at near university from the near certified developer program building your DAP with, and they could be funded from grants from the near foundation. And all of a sudden you wanting to clean up your local beach and the beaches around you can turn into this protocol where people are incentivized for going out and picking up trash and coming together. It's a real and, change in the world, right? Exactly. Just by, yeah. and it is possible. I'm not saying it's going to be easy or that we'll figure it out in a mm-hmm. year or two years or even 10 years, but we can, be, we can have fun and learn along the way. I think is a really cool way. Like people are having fun, learning and paying their bills as we're building these systems together, which is really cool. Connecting, it's, it's really a, a brilliant idea. A brilliant thought that actually, is, it gives us uh, hope. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> like, that's what's going at some point, right? I mean, 
I think the hope, I mean, the hope for me that keeps me going is that, again, everyone will be able to uh, be creative as they please or work on what gives them contentness in life or makes them content. Um, and hopefully that will be able to support those around them um, and also be enough to support themselves. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that we also have, we already have that in the web two world, which is great. But I think the problem is there's so many people in the world that can't support themselves for whatever reason, it doesn't really matter the reason, whether they don't want to, whether they're unable to because of their circumstances. And I think what web three gives us is a way to also fund those initiatives and those projects. So yeah. yes, we can still create what we like, but we can have 1% royalties towards those that can't support themselves. And just by doing what we're already doing, there could be automated ways and automated transparent ways of, of funding other initiatives, which hopefully can be built in as well. Right. Hopefully, really that's, that's what we're hoping for. Fingers yeah. crossed. <laughs> so um, what are your plans for your future, the future of your DAO and your metaverse presence that yeah. for Mama J Foundation, for instance, do you Good plan question. to make parties, events? Yeah, so we already talked about the fact that you want to have in real life events. Yeah, yeah. Um, but we definitely want to coincide those with virtual events. So that's the main mm -hmm. plan, hopefully, is that whenever we, like, the main goal is that whenever we have these in person events, we're mm -hmm. not leaving out the rest of our Marmor J family and we're able yeah, to bring them. Exactly, bring them all. Here's my notebook. In, in VR. Uh, so whether they want to come on Ethereum and come through Crypto Voxels, Mm -hmm. uh, whether they want to come through near and come through near hub those are our main two virtual spaces um we near do hub's growing, with, right yeah hmm? sorry uh the near hub is growing near I'm hub is growing quickly um yeah. so we're definitely planning on getting a lot more involved with the near hub mm -hmm. space the marma j chan like house um so the, the first initial and we interface with three through three xr through there so the idea is Currently, we have a short story project where a lot mm -hmm. of communities are writing short stories about Marmor J Chan. The idea is to mint these as like um, like literary NFTs, and then oh, hopefully, I, I saw this. yeah, and then hopefully, eventually, have like um, a bunch of three XR galleries on the wall for each project that we've had in the past. Oh. Um, so first, we're gonna have all our book NFTs interfacing with three XR that way. So we're hoping to interface with virtual reality worlds or VR worlds in a number of ways, hopefully. I mean, I'm not sure it's truly VR for some of these worlds. I know, although I know Lewish is uh, uh, 3XR world is VR and, and such. But um, I think with Near Hubs or Near Hub, yeah, we're hoping to interface a lot more with the Marmaje token as well. Um, and trying, cause I know for near hub, like the space can only handle a certain number of people. Um, and so the goal before, like you get different rooms. Um, so for example, if we have like 400 people there, um, at the moment they could make multiple rooms, but we wouldn't all be yeah. in the same room. And so I think uh, what would be really fun or for now would be trying mm -hmm. to have a room where let's say you have to hold a certain number of Marma J tokens in order to get into the room. Um, but then obviously people are earning Marmon J just for coming to events and you know, you know, attending you know, our calls. And so they don't have to buy into anything. Um, if they, you know, if that's their choice, obviously you can't stop them. Uh, but the idea is people could just be part of your community, uh, earn these tokens, and then you know, take part in the near hub space. And we could also have it with NFTs as well. So if you hold one of these NFTs. You can come to this space and as near hub grows and allows for more and more people into one space we can kind of use that to inc like, uh, loosen the restrictions on the token gating if that makes sense so you know hopefully you know we try and make it so only like 30 or 40 people have the access to come and then obviously over time we want to have as many people that can come in a virtual space but um as i'm sure you you've noticed if you're in the metaverse DAO. Um, when you're trying to have virtual events, if you don't have the features, for example, like noise suppression um, or other things, it can be very difficult to Crazy. have uh, intimate <laughs> uh, meetups um, in VR. And we want it to work, right? We want this, if we're having a, in, 
real life meetup we want to make sure everyone can you know take part and, and, and have fun in the space yeah. um so that's our plans currently um for how we're going to interact with uh vr um past that we're kind of hoping just to interact with our token more in general and try and experiment with um, more utility features um the marmalade tokens honestly just a token we just distribute from the dao to support projects um so we, we want to try and build in some ways where the people that earn the token, um, the only use case isn't to sell it to fund a project. Um, we want to build in maybe some governance use cases with uh, staking the token in the DAO and being able to poll and vote on proposals. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we want to work on maybe being able to buy select um, NFT collections with the Marmaj token would be super cool. Uh, I'm pretty sure Paras is working on allowing like uh, fungible tokens to be used on their platform for NFT purposes. Um, and yeah, I know near hubs, for example, is also, I know I was talking to Jeff about like being able to set, tip people. Um, I think that would be oh, super cool. cool. So one of the use cases of the VR space would be having uh, creatives or members of our community uh, actually come up in VR and maybe present or speak hopefully at some time. Um, and then hopefully we could actually tip uh, the people. Uh, I also think about like having live shows or like live creative shows where oh, I would like, love to, see that. to the <laughs> artist, like you can say, hey, this person is the artist and you can like stream to them forever, how yeah. long they stay up. Um, so we're hoping to get into these types of things. Obviously, mm -hmm. uh, it depends. Uh, a lot of these tools aren't built yet in the near ecosystem. And so <laughs> Um, we're hoping to we're play so early. <laughs> I know, right? We're hoping to play with these <laughs> as they get built. Um, but for now, playing a lot with uh, virtual galleries and um, you know virtual uh, NFT spaces. I'm loving to see all that being developed. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Um, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, well, that question sometimes is a bit hard to answer, but yeah, I, I think you can do it. What legacy would you like to to leave to future creatives and builders? I yeah, good, I, what it's kind a, of legacy it's a deep question. <laughs> yeah, so I feel like I've touched on it a few times. I feel like I just yeah. want to, if if it's a legacy of sorts, um, I guess in general, I would always want I want like the Marmaje Dow to kind of be this self sufficient mechanism that's able to support creatives. Um, like the idea would be that, you know, for generations to come, uh, creatives know that there's this uh, funding or support mechanism out there um, that is able to support their dreams and their projects and their creativity. Uh, as long as it supports, you know, positivity and uh, supporting others. Um, I think that's a good enough endeavor to, to support. And yeah. so um, the uh, goal is that anyone that's out there that has an idea that feels like they need some support to get there a little further. The Marmaj DAO should have enough support systems or enough resources to try and support them. Um, it's quite like a, a large goal, I think, um, to get to that point where everyone in the world just knows that you know the Marmaj DAO is out there. But I think blockchain allows for this potential permanence. Right, like if we assume the blockchain survives the next hundred years, um, and we assume that the near token survives the next hundred years, and you know if the DAO owns liquidity um, and the DAO has tokens, and we automate some of these features and some of these support systems, then potentially we could have a system where um, you know people, you know, uh, you know, some a, a thousand NFTs go on sale at the beginning of the year. Um, there's some sort of way to, you know, bid on these NFTs to try and get membership to the DAO and do decentralized KYC. Maybe that gives you some sort of like health insurance and some sort of benefit as being part of this association, right? And then maybe doing that, people are allowed to submit their proposals to the DAO to get support. And if you're a member, you're able to, you know, some take part in some sort of decision making and fund these initiatives. I don't know, right? Really? Maybe this is a way that we can start building these automated systems. And then hopefully at one day, uh, the Marma J DAO specifically can grow to be this wonderful thing. That's like, I guess my ego speaking. 
Um, but I don't really care that much. To me, it's whatever system uh, ends up surviving and being there in the future to fund all of this. I want to see that exist. I want to know, or I guess I don't really care about seeing it exist. I want it, I want it to be there. I mean, I have a young son, um, you know, Amory. So if you ever watch this, Amory, love you. Um, oh. Yeah, he's five and a yeah. half, turning six soon um, oh. in August. But <laughs> I guess the legacy is that you know, he will grow up in a world where he's able to uh, efficiently and sustainably um, be creative uh, and support his community by doing so uh, and feel, you know, um, you know, uh, feel confident in what he's doing and being able to do that. I think that everyone should have that um, ability. And so that, you know, I do it obviously selfishly so that my son can live in this future beautiful world where everyone gets yeah. <laughs> um, uh, Selfishly, of course, also I work on the Marmor J Foundation um, to show one way of doing it that I think might work. But I think what's beautiful about the Web3 space is that most things are open source or we try and be as open as possible. And so even if I'm able to work on the Marmor J Foundation and build a community that contributes some small way in some small way to this future system where everyone's able to receive some support for uh spreading love and positivity um you know glad to take part and so hopefully many others will come on board a beautiful idea a beautiful feeling that you want to to spread to people it, it all looks i'm cheering for you thank you thank you I appreciate it um yeah i mean we're out here just having fun so uh if you ever want to follow along obviously you've already seen our website and uh, sure. uh my, my bianca my fiance does a great job uh showcasing what we're working on and yeah congrats, we're just out here trying to, trying to congrats bianca you're really yeah, they... <laughs> well, no, yeah. So the last question, uh, if you're going to give some words of wisdom to those who are starting now, what would you say to them? Um, I guess first move fast and break things. Um, definitely um, like have fun. I think actually Sharif, head of the education team, uh, the, the best lesson he ever taught me working with him uh, was just to keep moving forward. Um, just keep building, keep going. Mistakes are going to get made. It's not. It's it's never going to be perfect, but the next time, use what you learned and just make it better. Um, mm -hmm. I remember I spent so long trying to make one of the videos I did for him like perfect, um, and his advice was just just well, make another I video. You. Yeah. Just make him. Just make I, another I'm video. Just like that. <laughs> instead of instead of spending ten hours making one video perfect, if the first video yeah, is good enough, if if it's like ninety percent, if it's if it's understandable and it's there and it took you one hour to make that video, you could spend 10 hours making 10 more videos. And by the time you got to the 11th video, right? You probably would have gotten so much better anyway that now you have 11 videos complete and you've learned so much. So yeah. you got 90%, 93%, 95%, 99%. And then by the time you get to the end, it's way better than the first video. But you're just you're continuing you just keep going so I, I guess all i can say is the web3 space moves so fast that if you try and make anything perfect you know things are going to change the tools are going to change the timing. <laughs> and it moves too fast. so have fun you know find your niche where you're able i think the web3 space there's always a spot for everybody where they can mm -hmm. just have fun learning and then somehow earn like they have, they have all these like gimmicky names, like learn to earn and like uh, play to earn and uh, yeah. play and earn and uh, whatever it is. Yes, this is the web through space where you can do whatever you'd like and there can be incentives right. attached. So my advice would be go out there, do what you love to do, uh, learn about it as much as you can and have fun and build a community definitely get involved with the community don't do it on your own that's definitely move fast and break things with a community that is the advice <laughs> doing it on your own is no fun it's not it, yeah uh, the community is what you remember when all the projects yeah. in the bear market and you lost your wallet and someone hacked you and all of this community is what makes you laugh and have fun and, you know keep having experimenting with things so 
what stays with you after. <laughs> exactly. You always remember the uh, remember the friendships you make in the communities. Uh, this interview was a great pleasure. I loved hearing everything you said. And Marble J's future looks very bright. Thank you. I'm so happy much, for Clara. you to, really to be here. It. And hopefully you get involved <laughs> with one of our future events or bounties. Uh, I don't know if you yeah. like writing, but you can write about Marma J. Chan. I'm an artist, but I I, I do stuff. <laughs> I do everything. <laughs> I, I honestly, that's the, just do yeah, do everything. There you go. So, and we're hoping to open up our bounties soon. <clears throat> I say soon, but might be a few months. Um, and the idea yeah. is that the community will be able to just submit open proposals uh, for funding. Um, projects that support love and creativity um, awesome. and the council um, hopefully of token holders will help us decide if we're doing a good job or not at least so we might still fund them as a more centralized council but we definitely mm -hmm. want to wait until the community is able to let us know more efficiently how we're doing before we move into that and we got, got to get the nonprofit set up um, but thank you so much Sorry. Clara for the interview. Oh, thank you. You've been great. I loved it. <laughs> yeah, it was so much fun chatting with you. I'm sure we'll chat more. Um, sure. Now you're in the near ecosystem. You're stuck with us. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds great. Okay. Have a wonderful it's rest a great of the to be stuck with. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it is fun. Thank here. you so much. You're welcome. Have Bye. A great Thank you. Bye.